Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to present our data on platinums in early triple negative breast cancer in the Department of Medical Oncology, CMC. The addition of carboplatin to neoadjuvant therapy in TNBC has improved PCR to the tune of 46 to 59 percent, but with no demonstrable overall survival benefit so far. This platin is less studied, but has been shown to be safe in multiple smaller trials. From 2015 to 2018, in an initial cohort of patients, we analyzed the outcomes with cisplatin when given in a sequential manner along with anthracycline and taxane as neoadjuvant chemotherapy in early and locally advanced triplanetal breast cancer. Patients were given cisplatin 60 mg per meter square, given every three weeks along with weekly paclitaxel. This was followed or preceded by dose tens PC. 80% of patients had stage 3 disease with more than 70% having grade 3 tumor. The most common treatment-related adverse event was anemia, with 38% of patients developing grade 3 or 4 anemia. Pathological complete response, defined as no residual invasive disease in breast or axilla, was seen in 48.1% of patients. The disease-free survival at 3 years for those who had PCR was 77.6% and 62.7% for those who did not. From 2018 to 2020, we treated our second cohort of patients with a novel alternating regimen known as the DDDCEP. We conducted a retrospective study on these patients. The DDDCEP regimen was designed with an alternating schedule to reduce toxicity, as there would be a four week gap between doses of individual drugs. As two active agents were given in each cycle, dose density was maintained and cell kill would not be compromised. As docetaxel and cisplatin have overlapping neurotoxicity, we did not administer them together. Epirubicin was not given with docetaxel to reduce diarrhea and mucositis. At baseline, 56% of patients had stage 3 locally advanced disease, 58% had grade 3 tumors, and 77% had no positive disease. Febrile neutropenia was seen in 4% of patients. Only grade 1 and 2 AKI was encountered. Peripheral neuropathy was seen in 6% and was grade 1 or 2. There was no hearing loss reported, and nearly 40% of patients developed grade 3 anemia requiring transfusion. Baseline anemia was already present in 47% of our patients. Hemoglobin fell by nearly 3 grams during chemotherapy. 86% of our patients completed all 8 cycles of planned chemotherapy, which is comparable if not higher than most carboplatin studies. Pathological complete response was seen in 55.2% of patients. In stage 1 and 2 disease, PCR was 62.2% and in stage 3 disease, it was 47.4%. The follow-up is currently short at 20 months of median. A total of 10 patients have relapsed and 4 have died. At 26 months, the DFS with PCR was 88%. Our study showed comparable, if not higher, PCR when compared to the carboplatin trials, keeping in mind that this is a non-randomized single-arm retrospective study. The FN and neutropenia rates were lower when compared to the JEPA-62 and the CAMGB trials, but the incidence of anemia was high. Platinums, especially cisplatin, lead to a high proportion of PCR in TNDC, and when given in an alternating schedule, has good tolerability and dose completion rate. The question of whether it is superior to the current standard of dose tense ACT in terms of overall survival is a question which has not yet been answered for cisplatin or carboplatin. We have designed a phase 2 RCT hoping to shed some light on this topic and are hoping to start it soon. We are also hoping to collaborate on this work with like-minded institutions. Thank you for your patient listening.